what would be most useful for you today? Um, well, I initially emailed you because I was thinking of retaking the LSAT. So I got a 156 um, and I took it back in July. And I went back and forth on whether to retake it or not. Right now, my score gets me into the schools that I'm applying to here in Illinois. And it's, um, it's kind of above their range or in the middle of it. Um, so I, I think I'm doing pretty good. I was going to take the January exam. Um, so I kind of needed guidance with retaking, like with um, restudying. Um, but I, ha I did decide yesterday or a few days ago not to retake it. Um, and I, I'm just going to apply with my score. Um, the reason why I wanted to retake it was more so for scholarships, because I know that the higher your score, the more opportunity you have to either get a full ride or, or you know, get as much of that cost covered. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I could always take a gap year if I decide to. I am graduating early from college. So I, you know, if I take a gap year, I still finish within the same time I would have finished had I graduated normally from college. So I just wanted to hear your insight and what you would suggest for me um, with students retaking the LSAT and everything like that. Yeah, sure. So with regard to retaking, there really isn't much downside, assuming you haven't taken the LSAT several times already. Because mm -hmm. law schools, they don't average multiple L scores. They only take the highest. And so let's say that you deserved to get a 160, let's say. On test day, you might get 160 exactly. You might get 157, or you might get 163. There's a margin of error of three and a half points on either end. And so if you do better than the score you deserved, that's great. You get to apply with a higher score. And if you do worse on a retake, no big deal because law schools don't average multiple scores. And so if you're planning to take a gap year and there's a longer timeline before you apply, then you could retake in January or you could retake in the spring or the summer if you want to. And obviously I know that you don't want to extend your LSAT involvement for that long. Most likely you want to be done with this and move on with your life. So maybe you want to shoot for the test date in February or March if you'll have the time to give it as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And then obviously with an, a little bit more studying, a little bit more improvement in your understanding, you may even do better than that three-point margin on either end. Mm -hmm. And so there's, I, there's a February LSAT usually. Yeah, there and is. at this point, it would be too late for me to take the February and still apply for fall 2020. Um, because when I was working with Kaplan, what my tutor told me was, if I get a good score, apply with that score. And then if, you know, if I'm not satisfied, and even after I apply, I can retake the LSAT anyway, and then resubmit the new score, would you advise against that? Or? It would be fine. It would be fine. I mean, if you're planning to retake, I wouldn't apply until you have the score back from that retake. Mm -hmm. So for this cycle, January is the latest at date at which I would take the LSAT. If you're going to go for February or beyond, I would apply the next cycle instead because then you can apply at the beginning when there's more scholarship money available and your odds are higher. Some schools okay. will take February LSATs for that cycle, but then scholarship money is typically reduced and the odds are a little bit lower. So I would okay. make a decision, go for January with this cycle or February or March or beyond for the next cycle. Okay. And so for me with a retake, would you recommend, I mean, I have basically all prep tests and then I have like the LSAT or Kaplan explanations. And I mean, I could just use that, but I just feel like if I'm going to retake it, I want the certainty that I have a guideline and structure. Would you recommend your guides, like the monthly guides or? Yeah, sure. I actually have a, a study plan specifically for retakers that helps you focus on your weak areas and then, of course, transition to full-length timed exams. But mm -hmm. have you used one of my schedules before? I have not, no. One of my friends did, and she did well. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But I'd say that if you haven't yet used one of my schedules and you feel like there's still some room to improve your foundation, I would suggest one of the regular schedules instead because it'll shore up any gaps in your understanding. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you. That makes me feel a lot better. Um, with the whole retake situation. And then you had also mentioned that you could do kind of like a sample class. So I am president of a pre-law association at my, at Aurora University. Um, and we do have a lot of juniors and sophomores who are starting to, you know, wander into how do I start studying? And, and they've asked me, you know, what, 
resources do you recommend? So I have mentioned you, I have mentioned Kaplan, which I wasn't as happy with Kaplan, but that's always an option and pretty much Khan Academy. Um, so I, I, can you talk to me about how that would work so that they can kind of see um, how your guides work? Personally, I just, I recommend yours above everything else because looking back, I feel like I would have benefited more from something like this. Um, but yeah, I mean, you let yeah, me know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to hear it and I'm, gl I'm glad to help. So for the students in your pre-law society, I could teach a free online class covering anything at all around LSAT prep, digital LSAT specifically. I can also talk about law school admissions and we could run this anytime you like. We could run it early at the beginning of next semester if you like or later into the spring, whatever timeline works best for your members. And mm -hmm. I teach it as an online webinar over Zoom, the program that we're using now. Students can connect from their own devices, a smartphone, tablet, laptop. They can even dial in if they want to. I'll typically do a, a short presentation on the topics of choice. Typically, I'll talk about LSAT self-study or retake prep or test day prep specifically. And then I'll open it up to a general Q&A on anything at all LSAT and law school admissions. And students who can't make it can still RSVP and get a copy of the recording afterwards. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's actually would be very beneficial. Um, they've been learning a lot about law school admissions. I've had um, like universities come in and we've been to universities. So I think something designed around LSAT specifically would really help them and how to start studying for the LSAT. What is the LSAT, all of the components, how it works, all of that, because um, I remember being in their position and not knowing what the LSAT even looked like. So if we could do something like that and it would be like a 45 minute session or how long do those run for? Yeah, typically 45 to an hour based on the number of questions I get. Okay. So I am going to talk about this with my advisor and our board, but most likely um, I think this is something that I, I really want to do for them. And then hopefully you can get, you know, more students. <laughs> and yeah, because I, I highly recommended you. So very excited. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? The biggest insight, um, I think just the reassurance that with retaking the LSAT that, you know, I can, I can do it and it's not that scary and it's not a big deal if I have to take a gap year because that's kind of what I've been uh, battling with this whole time. But yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. And I'll be in touch with some potential dates for that class. Of course. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.